Uh, but the biggest thing we, we, meant, we, we noticed, and this was huge, is that the people who registered, they showed up and they stayed until the end, like 80% of, of those people stayed until the end. And if you're involved in, if you're listening to this and you do any sorts of webinar or masterclass or live event or something, you know the fall off rate. You know how, how like you lose tons of people, especially, like even after a few minutes. You're listening to the B2B Growth Think Tank, the show that brings you the virtual hot seat where each week my expert guests and I help another business leader by masterminding actionable solutions to a specific challenge they're currently trying to solve in their business. So if you're looking for answers to a specific challenge that you're facing, that if you could solve in the next 90 days would have a huge impact on your growth, send it in to thinktank at thinklikeafish.co.uk and we'll see if we can feature you on the show. My name is Adam King, your host and the captain of the ship at growth consultancy Think Like a Fish. And if you're ready to rethink what's possible for your business and discover the growth strategies, advice and insight to turn this new vision into a reality, let's get started. Hey, Adam here and thanks very much for tuning in. And as you are, I'm going to make the assumption that you are responsible for generating revenue for an established B2B professional service business and you're looking to grow your revenue. So what I've got for you, you're going to absolutely love because I've recently released my new revenue multiplier calculator and bonus training where using this tool and following the training, you'll discover how to uncover the hidden revenue opportunities in your business and be able to systemize your growth using seven revenue multipliers that can double your business in 12 months or less. So if you want to go and grab your copy, go to thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash calculator. Now on to today's episode. Well, hello and welcome to the B2B Growth Think Tank. Now, joining me today to talk business growth is someone who's an absolute master of the timeless fundamental of the ultimate persuasion skill, which is direct response copywriting. Now, he's a former psychology researcher who's combined this skill set with copywriting in a pretty cool and unique way. And that is I'm, uh, we'll, we'll tell you where you can go to find this, but he's broken down a hundred proven sales letters and he did this in a hundred days to uncover the master secrets of, honestly, the most elite copywriters of all times. And he's documented this entire process through daily YouTube videos. Now, he is today the founder of Game of Conversions where he helps ambitious businesses convert more casual leads into high average order value customers and plug the holes in their leaking marketing and sales processes. So this is gonna be a fantastic conversation. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome my guest, Saba Borzizi, to the show. Hey, Chabba, Adam, isn't it? Morning. It's Chabba, isn't it? It's yes. Chabba. We even rehearsed this before we started. <laughs> yes, exactly. Good morning, Adam. It's great to be here. And wow, what a great intro. I'm uh, first of all, the hundred videos. Where can people go to to take a look at those? Because I want to make sure we get that out first, because obviously that is an incredibly valuable resource. Mm-hmm. I've actually put together a playlist on YouTube, so you can find all the hundred videos there but uh you know uh they are pretty long so these are long form advanced pieces of content uh but it's there for anyone to see it's basically uh, a playlist we're going to have the link you know in the show notes uh but i I definitely invite you to check it out because i cover people there from like the the og copywriters you know claude hopkins who basically invented the game of scientific advertising but also Mm. Um, Eugene Schwartz, David Ogilvy, uh, Gary Halbert, Gary Ben Savenga, uh, the Agora copywriters from Agora Financial, as well as you know some newer people like Stefan Georgi, who is like a, a more well-known copywriter today, and a bunch of other A-listers. That sounds amazing. So uh, is it on our YouTube channel? Is there a link yes. people can go to? Yes, yes, yes. It's basically my YouTube channel is called Game of Conversions. And there you'll find you can find the playlist. Uh, you know, there's there are links everywhere, but we're also going to leave a link probably to it <laughs> directly. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave the link on directly under the show notes. So if you get to uh, click that, make sure you do. So, um, I mean, I've given you a bit of a, a, an introduction and, and that's that's from what I've, I've got to know about you. But let's say you were to run into a, an ideal client. Well, how do you talk about what you do? What do you tell, what do you say to them about what you do? Mm-hmm. I would say that ambitious online entrepreneurs hire me to fix the holes in their leaky funnels and upgrade their messaging because most of their uh, copy is pretty weak 
in most cases, uh, their funnels aren't converting properly. So I basically help them make money from uh, converting more casual leads into, into profitable customers and raving fans, you know, without being sleazy or uh, overly aggressive or speaking like a marketer, you know? Mm. Well, I mean, nobody nobody likes marketers, do they? Uh, was it Seth, was it uh, Seth Godin's book? All marketers are liars, yes, or book, something like book. that. You know, there is a um, there is a negative connotation sometimes when it comes to this sort of thing and and all the rest of it because none of us like to be. We've all been on the receiving end, I think, of of the wrong way to do it. But you are very much from the perspective of looking at things the right way to do it. So let's let's sort of dive into that. Like if we're talking how, I mean, we're talking copywriting, yes, but ultimately what we're really doing is talking about how to communicate, yeah. how to communicate with our clients and how to communicate the things about our business that are going to matter to the, to the, to a, to a client. So how do you think about this? Uh, that's a great question, actually. Well, you know, I think the word copywriting itself is terrible because first of all, a lot of people totally confuse it with copywriting, you know, the legal uh, practice. Um, and secondly, it assumes that it all that, that the main thing here is writing, but in a sense, it's copy thinking. And um, one of my mentors, David Deutsch, who's a, who's a high level A-list copywriter, one of the best of all time, uh, he, he came up with this copy thinking term. And it basically means that um, instead of just writing something, you should get into the conversation that's already happening inside your prospect mind. He wasn't the, the first one who came up with this, this, this idea, but he was the first one I know of to came up uh, with, uh, with this, this concept of you should, you should, we're in the idea business, right? And you basically want to communicate a persuasive idea, a big idea. Some people also call it the big idea that sounds different, that sounds interesting, and that gets your message across as, as efficiently as possible because a confused mind doesn't buy. So if you try to be funny, if you try to be clever about your headline or about a tagline or something, sure, you might win a few marketing awards, but in the world of direct response marketing and direct response copywriting, those things usually don't work so well. So you have you, you want to be simple, to the point, speak, like write like you speak. And just like having a conversation at a bar with someone who's having like uh, a problem and you happen to have a solution. Yeah, because I find that certainly you know, over my career in, in marketing, and I'm, I'm not a copywriter, I, I do enough to be dangerous sometimes, okay. but... Um, I, I've, I've often found that when I've, I've needed to create any form of marketing or campaign or anything like that, and then certainly in the corporate world, much more so, um, it's kind of one of the big reasons why I, uh, I, I left it. But anyway, another story for another day. Um, there was very much a, a, a an undertone of wanting to appear in a certain way using either corporate language or it was very much look at, you know, look at what we've done, what we've achieved, all the awards we've got. We have the greatest service, blah, 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 blah. And that is incredibly not. It's not only dull. It's it's uninspiring, and it is very much from the perspective of the business. And then people wonder, sort of wonder, why the you know the brochure doesn't work, or you know marketing mm -hmm. is doing you know not not the job that it's supposed to do, all that kind of thing. But as you've touched on there, and that's what got me thinking. This is really it's communication. Like no matter what format it is, whether it's a letter, a brochure, a video, anything like that. It is communication. And how do you talk to another human being? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You, you, it's conversational. So is that a big part of, of um, some of the, the, the way that you see the communication and, and how to get your, I, I guess, get your, your worldview, that big idea across? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's, you know, we as, as, as humans, we evolve to be social creatures and we're visual and that's a separate thing on how copywriting actually works. You have to basically plant images inside people's minds, but we're also very verbal as well. And uh, we're always having like, you know, conversations that's happening in our minds. We're always talking to other people when we're writing, when we're reading something, oftentimes people, not everyone, but most people, they kind of hear their own voice as they're reading something. So if you can mimic that type of voice, in the uh, in, in in the own voice of a specific prospect, that's a winner there, and mm. it also brings up something that I think it's really important, and a lot of people misunderstand it. You know, nowadays there's this misconception that um, 
nobody reads long copy anymore because like people have low attention spans. Well, it's true, but it's also not true. It's not true because look at people binge watching shows on Netflix. Look at people reading novels. Look at people reading stuff that's interesting to them. So nobody reads stuff that's uninteresting, that's boring, or they've heard it before, but they do read something. If I were to come out with the headline, um, Adam King's top 10 uh, dirty secrets exposed, you would probably read that ad. Well, I want to know what they are. <laughs> it's because it's relevant to you. Yeah. Well, I want to know what my dirty secrets are. <laughs> well, now <laughs> like, I want to know it too. <laughs> here we go. Um, no, but it's very, very true. And there's there's, there's a known sort of um, phrase. It's people buy on emotion not yeah. lo- and, and then reason with logic. And I think that term gets bounced around an awful lot without the real understanding of what that means. What does that mean to you? Uh, I totally agree with that. Um, You know, emotion, again, it all goes down to like evolutionary biology and psychology. And I studied this as part of my university studies. Uh, We are highly emotional creatures. That doesn't mean that it's a separate system. It's like, oh, it's all emotion and it's all logic. They're they're definitely intertwined. And interestingly enough, if people have, um, you know, they, 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 they have lesions in certain parts of their brains, for example, and that prevents them from, from experiencing emotions properly, suddenly their decision-making uh, system also goes out the window because these things are intertwined. But um, just like we, um, we uh, choose a food or someone we love or a car, like people buy cars based on emotion, we do basically everything like that. Uh, And sure, you need to rationalize it later on as well. And you start to rationalize it more and more. Like, you know, if someone's having a midlife crisis, let's say, and they want to buy a sports car, uh, at first, it's definitely an emotional decision. But then they start rationalizing. It's like, oh, yeah, but it's 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 so good. And here are the pros, pros and cons. And it's actually a good investment because it's like a collectible piece or something like that. Um, And regardless of what people do, uh, the first thing that connects with them is is an emotional thing. And that's why stories are also so, so important and work so well. So, again, storytelling seems to be quite hot now um, if you're in the marketing world. And um, there's a lot of people out there saying you need to tell stories in order to attract clients now. And people are like, well, you know, if, if you're not a marketer or a copywriter, it's kind of like, well, what does that mean? I'm, you know, tell stories. It's, you know, I don't really get it. Mm-hmm. What does that mean to you? Oh, that's a great question. I love it. Uh, the thing is that uh, we live in a world where there are so many promises, so many marketing messages, so many empty empty promises out there, and people are more skeptical than ever. Uh, so if you were to come up in a Facebook ad, let's say, with a direct offer or a direct promise, promising people to give them a specific result, like lose X amount of pounds and X amount of days. I mean, Facebook would immediately ban you. You cannot even say something like this anymore. But let's say you have an email list and, and you would come, come up with an offer like this. It wouldn't really work that well because it's, it's just noise at this point. Uh, and this has something to do with uh, what... Uh, a famous marketer and copywriter called Eugene Schwartz came up with. It's called the levels of market sophistication. It's based on how many ads and marketing messages your market has been exposed to. And the higher this is, the more skeptical they are. And the more skeptical they are, the more you can capture their attention with a story. And you see this everywhere. Great marketing has great stories everywhere because A story is a perfect mechanism to hijack your your brain. We've been hardwired to be, uh, you know, sensitive to stories, especially when it's an emotional story that uh, kind of uh, twists a knife a little bit, that kind of connects with the same pain point that that you are also having. You immediately pay attention to that because you feel like, you know, it's connecting with you. You don't know why or how yet, but it's just enough to get the foot in the door. Mm. And there's a there's different schools of thoughts, isn't there, in terms of how you first get that attention? Because mm-hmm. really, that's the first piece, isn't it? It's, it, <laughs> it's like we are still, as business owners running businesses or, or whatever it is, it, we, we, we're kind of still in a weird, tr- strange way, it's little children clamoring oh, for yeah. our parents' attention, right? Absolutely. But that attention comes from the mark or it comes from our... Um, 
ideal clients. And and the first thing or the only thing I think or the, the majority of people are thinking is how do I get more attention? That is important because it is the first thing. But yeah. what I find, and maybe you will have an opinion as well, once you get that attention, what do you do with it? And I don't think a lot of people have an idea or a strategy for what happens after they get the attention because that's all they're thinking about sometimes. Um, and it's it's a it's a difficult thing because it's so hard to get that attention, mm-hmm. especially today and depending where you are and you've got to think about things in different ways and, oh, do I need to do stories and how do I do this story thing and maybe I should be copywriting and blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, so many different, like, oh, my God, that when you do get the attention, it's like, now what? Yeah. So now what? Like in your in your world, like what happens once you've grabbed somebody's attention? Yeah, Um there's an art and science to this, definitely, because just like you said, you can easily get attention. Like there was those, those famous ads called sex. So now that I have your attention, listen to this. Uh, but it's clickbait. Like you immediately lose people. And nowadays, you know, you piss people off a lot with this. Mm. And then you can get penalized and marked as spam or something like that. Um, so how most copywriters do this is that uh, basically there's this this concept of a big idea that I mentioned already. It's basically just an idea because people connect with ideas. It's kind of like the idea behind P90X. You know, there was this system uh, like muscle confusion. It's it's a new idea, right? It's also something we call unique mechanism, but it's a new idea. And then the headline, basically the first part of your message that grabs attention kind of expresses that big idea in a... Uh, in an interesting new way. But then once people read the headline, you go into something we call the lead. And the leads part is basically to just build emotional uh, desire and to tease something. So once you get people's attention, you only have them for a few seconds. So now you kind of have to highlight how the thing that you want to tell them, actually, not necessarily sell them, but tell them, and that's why uh, education-based marketing also works so well nowadays, is, is different and it's superior compared to anything they've seen before because they've seen it all. They've seen, they've heard the promises, they've been burned many times. A lot of people don't consider this, but they've been burned before. And if you're, if you're basically giving them a webinar or a sales letter or something that's a little bit more long form, then it's definitely the best thing you can do is to spend a few hundred words of copy or script on just, just, it's like a trailer. It's, it's building up an emotional uh, connection with this whole message so that they actually, and the more invested they are into this, the, the deeper they get into the message, the more likely they are to consume more of it. And the more likely they are to actually buy something. And if, you, if you're not in, 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 in the business of, of a long form copy, you're only doing a Facebook ad or like a shorter form Facebook ad or a shorter email or something, still you can do this lead part in just a few sentences or a few far- paragraphs. You just, get, you, you just tell them like, hey, um, there's this new thing that I know it sounds weird and everything, but uh, here's all the proof that it works. And I get, bet you haven't seen this before. Uh, and this is actually the key to your, your deepest desire. Um, and the reason why you haven't heard this before is because this and that. Mm. And then to learn and more about this, keep reading. That's it. And I know that the, the way that we connected um, was um, it was at a, a virtual event. Yes. And it was uh, the Strategic Alliance Summit. And ironically, because uh, uh, probably just as this has come out, it will be you know at the end of a uh, an entire series on strategic alliances and, and all that kind of thing. And it was Tom Madsen's event, who's been on this show. But I had noticed a very big change in the way that that event was being communicated, mm-hmm. being promoted. I didn't realize that you were the man behind the mm-hmm. actual copy, and I thought well, this is impressive. First of all. Um, but second of all, I think it's a really good example, and this is why I bring it up, of what you've just sort of said there. Mm-hmm. So we're obviously not going to go through the whole page or anything like that. But why don't you, so strategic alliances, right? People will have an, a, a preconceived idea of what that is, and then maybe they'll put it in a box. Either this is for me or this is not for me. Yes. So you came up with something new, didn't you? Yes. So uh, we, the first thing we wanted to do, do with this one is to avoid something we call the categorical imperative. And this is basically fancy talk for, hey, I've heard that before. And I know that 
if, if the topic of strategic alliances, especially like a conference that's about strategic alliances comes up, a lot of people immediately disqualify it saying that, oh, it's not for me. Oh, I tried it before. Oh, it's, it sounds too complicated. Or I'm an introvert. I don't want to talk to people that much. Um, and uh, what we did instead is that we shifted the whole conversation and we didn't even let people know that this is kind of strategic alliance live. It's, it's, it's a product. The whole page started out as like, there's this new thing called leveraged acquisition, and it's, it's the best thing we know of to uh, generate a surge of new buyers for you risk-free and in a guaranteed way. And I know it sounds unbelievable, but just give me a few minutes so that I can explain because this is unlike anything you've seen before. And, um, and even just hearing that, it's like, okay, like, yeah. I would like to know what this, this new thing is. Like, what's yes. this leveraged acquisition? And let's, let's listen. So you've kind of got my attention more than just got my attention you've now sort of reeled me in with okay i'm going to give you a little bit longer here mm -hmm. because that's what this whole thing is all about isn't it it's not necessarily to go straight from attention to sale it's to first of all it's it's all about milestones isn't it it's yeah. getting them to the next step yes and exactly. there's the known thing in copywriting it's to get them to read the next sentence with yeah. marketing it's to get them from you know one point to the next point to the next point blah blah blah, blah until that journey completes with them becoming a client hopefully and then an advocate and then a repeat and all the rest of it so it's, it's an entire journey isn't it yeah exactly like greatly put um there's there was this uh, famous copywriter called joseph sugarman basically invented uh, the 800 number in the u.s for marketing purposes uh and and he came up with the concept called the, sli the slippery slope so you basically start people on this journey and the only thing they can do is come up at the end like if you do your your um your job right and i think in this case um the headline was give me 15 minutes and i'll show you a risk-free way to uh, acquire a surge of new buyers for free without posting on social media without running paid ads doing content marketing cold outreach webinars or even building an email list Sounds like a pipe dream, not if you use a simple new risk-free strategy called leveraged acquisition. So that was the whole headline complex. And the reason why it sounded like that is because we gave them this new opportunity. We answered a few objections preemptively and we appealed to all the stuff that they hate, like who likes po posting on social media constantly? Who likes hustling with, with uh, you know, uh, all, all these content mm -hmm. marketing strategies? Um, like throwing rocks at the enemy isn't yes, it like yes. this is all the stuff i hate doing so let's yeah. take it away from you and all that kind of thing and it is genuine because and, and and anyone listening to this it's like this is how you communicate in a way that actually sort of gets people interested in what you do and you can apply this to anything because strategic alliances has been around since the dawn of yeah. man right <laughs> you know it's 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 always been there it's not new however the way that somebody can really think about it. And it's all about what is the benefit? What is the outcome? But as important is, what don't I have to do? Like, what, you know, what is the mechanism that I will use and what is the result I can expect to achieve? But what is that level of effort maybe that I'm going to have to go through to actually mm -hmm. get it? And, you know, there's there's a lot of, there's, I mean, there's just so much. I, you know, anyone listening, just just go back and kind of almost listen to that 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 opening piece there because, even if that's not what you do as a business, you can apply that framework. You know, just take the headline. What was what was there? Um, that that next line, which was was kind of like a bridge to the next bit. If you just mm -hmm. give me fifteen minutes, yeah. I will show you how to basically achieve the outcome that you want. Like there's there's so much in that, and it's a fantastic example of just thinking about. Okay, well, this is a very simple framework mm -hmm. of how I start to communicate, um, how I start to, you know, you can use it in all sorts of different ways. And I mean, what I, what I sort of think is everyone can do this because everyone knows how to have conversations, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were to say to someone sort of listening to this and going, okay, you know, I need to start getting better at this or I need to start encouraging some of my team to get better at this. Is there, is, is there a first step or a, a real sort of key thing that you would advise somebody to do when it comes to getting better at their communication and really sort of nailing in their, their, their message? Mm -hmm. Well, you can always watch my videos on YouTube, especially this playlist, because that's like a, having a master's degree in, in copywriting. 
Um, well, that but, is that, you know, I, I, I know you're sort of like almost being a little bit self-deprecating with that, but like that's serious. Like it is amazing the amount of value that is there. So I, don't, I almost don't want you to gloss over it because there is an incredible amount of value there that you can look at and understand. So again, make sure you click the link in the show notes, but um, carry on. <laughs> yeah. So um, in other terms, like you, you kind of have to shift your, your, your thinking from this writing mode or this marketer mode into someone who, who basically wants to tell someone something. Because what I've noticed, and I also had this problem when I first got started, it's like when you know I have a task, let's say I have to write an email or something or sales email, um, we tend to shift into this writing mode. We tend to believe that we have to come up with this amazingly sounding message and it kind of blocks us. It blocks our creativity. It, it kind of prevents you from sounding genuine in many cases. And I blame the public education system for this because they teach you a lot of things, but uh, they also teach you to, to sound complicated and to use all these fancy words and, and to, because then you sound really smart and then people should buy from you, right? Or they should they should they should they should take you uh, they, they should uh, they should believe you or they should uh, be um, persuaded by you. But in reality, what happens is that uh, people want to connect with other people, and um, if 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 these other people have interesting ideas, then most people are willing to learn more. So I would say I don't necessarily want to give your, your, uh, your listeners like specific resources here because it depends on your specific situation. Sure, you can definitely read Breakthrough Advertising from Eugene Schwartz, one of the best books on copywriting. You can you, uh, read Great Leads from uh, Mark Ford, also called Michael Masterson under his pen name, which, which is like six specific ways on how to actually start a message that gets people um, but I would suggest you basically just try to, um, to listen to other people and to, and to just let go of this persona of, of being a salesperson or a marketer and try to bring, bring out your genuine self and your empath, empathetic self, because mm. empathy goes a long way here. Yeah. Be a human being. Yeah. You think be about human another human people being. People buy from humans. Because you've ultimately got to fall in love with your client, don't you? Yeah. And you really have to understand them and their world and ultimately why they even give a crap about you. Because yeah. let's be honest, they don't. Yeah. They care about them and all the rest of it. And it's kind of like, how do you take that understanding and, and really get to know your client? Like get to know them because that will inform everything. And, uh, you know, when it comes to communication and, you know, even service development, product development, whatever it is you're into, and then that will just make everything that you've just given as an example yeah. there to go and do much easier. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 I think it's the, yeah, the first, the first thing that, um, you know, we should do. So, um, I, th I mean, there is, there is so much that could be covered with this sort of topic it, it is it is so big it's it's all psychology it's it's mm -hmm. applied psychology there's so many you know there are tips and tricks and techniques in copywriting and all that kind of thing but i don't think we can do it necessarily justice right now which is why again i will encourage everyone to go and check out the 100 videos that you've done breaking this down um, onto the youtube channel and um you know really you know even if you just pick one or two just to get a sense of 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 what it takes to really talk or write or communicate in a way that is actually going to serve you and your business. Yeah. Because the la one of the last things I want to sort of ask you about is because I obviously spoke about how we met and that you were the one responsible for the sales page for the event that we went to the Strategic Alliance live. I don't know if you know this, but do you know the difference between what they had sort of last year and, and what happened this year. Like, is there a tangible, because mm -hmm. this, this is really what I want somebody to take away. It's like, this is kind of like the before and after of doing this well. And by the way, this previously was written by people that are very good at marketing. What happened? Um, I don't have the specific numbers yet because Tom is so busy onboarding new customers uh, because of this 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 campaign and because he's well, amazing. It's a testimony he in does. itself, isn't it? Yeah, but he, but, but it's, it's, uh, 
Like it currently, it seems like the current version generated mid six figures in cash and eight figures in, 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 in like contracts, future contracts. Um, but I don't know the specifics yet. I do know I've, I, I've seen the, the old page and it was, it screamed hype. Then that mm-hmm. was the problem. You know, all those too many bolded elements, too much caps lock, too much, too, too many flashy colors and like, uh, hey, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, and again, there are situations when that's what you want, when you know that your, your uh, target audience uh, is ready for your pitch and they, they just want the hype, then that's what you have to give them. Then you don't have to beat around the bush. But in this case, since this was also going out to colder audiences, really wanted to warm them up in this sense. So uh, it's it definitely worked better. Uh, it's hard to quantify because Tom and his, his team is so amazing at, 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 at like converting people on the conference itself. Well, what about in terms of, has, has Tom given you any indication of um, like registrations? Uh, yeah, so more people registered, uh, but the biggest thing we, we, met, we, we noticed, and this was huge, is that the people who registered, they showed up and they stayed until the end, like 80% of, of those people stayed until the end. And if you're involved in, if you're listening to this and you do any sorts of webinar or masterclass or live event or something, you know the fall off rate, you know how, how like you lose tons of people, especially, like even after a few minutes. And the mere fact that um, like 80%, this is just, I don't know the specific number, but I would say around 80, like I've also been on this conference and I've seen the, the people on the first day and on the last day, 80% of them were there on the last day and a huge percentage of these converted into paying customers for like a hundred thousand dollar program. Well, let's, mm-hmm. let's, and so th- this was the biggest, uh, biggest, uh, um, ace in the hole here is that as we made them consume more of the sales message and we educated them on the sales page itself, we shifted their beliefs and answered their objections. Uh, we kind of seeded this idea even before they, they came to the event and they were already pre-sold. Mm-hmm. Uh, a great book on this is Robert, Robert Cialdini's a Persuasion book. Um, so they were pre-sold and, and this was huge. Absolutely. I mean, it's as much as well, you know, the, the pre-selling thing is is huge. Um, it's kind of like the difference between, like, imagine if you were going onto stage, right? Mm-hmm. And you were going to do a talk in front of an audience and somebody goes and says, now here's a copywriter, Saba, mm-hmm. let's, let's listen to what he's got to say. Or, you know, this is, this is why I give it an introduction in the way that it is, because yeah. I want people to be kind of positioned in a way that people are going to understand that there's an incredible amount of value in what this guest is about to say and i hope that that primes that that positions and that pre-sells people on on going to listen first of all because it's a milestone first of all i want to kind of know a little bit more and then we get into the conversation and, and, and all the rest of it but that is huge and it also disqualifies a lot of the people that maybe would have responded to the hype and it also embeds them into the thinking required to actually achieve the outcome um, and there's so much in it and 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 yes we could go on for a long 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 time however um i think it is a good point to um to to, to sort of finish there and let people go and finally go and check out those 100 videos and um you know tell us a little bit more you know where are you most active if people want to sort of uh, you know get in contact mm-hmm. where should they go to uh, on LinkedIn, for example, but also on Facebook, you can just send me a friend request on Facebook as well. Um, but what I what I want to uh, uh, tell people is that uh, the problem with these hundred videos is there's they're so comprehensive. A lot of people get lost. So the way to make it even better and to make sure that you actually get the value out of it. Uh, I also created uh, a cheat sheet that basically takes the the essence of the of the lessons that I learned while breaking down these 100 uh, you know, uh, proven sales letters. And it puts them into a really neat little uh, downloadable that you can get right away. And it includes something that I consider to be the ultimate persuasive message formula. And then you can take that, you can use it in a sales page, uh, in an email, in a Facebook ad, in a YouTube ad, whatever. Plus, when you get this, you're also going to get these, uh, these um, um, proven sales letter breakdown videos dripped out to you with more commentary, with like specific tips on what you should look out for. So I definitely encourage you, if you're interested in this, to check out uh, uh, 
uh, the specific page that I created. It's uh, on my website. It's gameofconversions.com forward slash copywriting hyphen secrets. So, so uh, again, that will be in the uh, in the show notes. And and I almost want to encourage. Well, no, I do want to encourage people to rewind that back because you've just been given an example of copywriting communication Mm -hmm. everything that you've sort of done there is an example of using a unique mechanism putting in some bonuses like and and we're talking about a free giveaway and, and people do not necessarily understand that every time you are communicating whether it's to you know buy something to do an action whatever it is you are needing to be persuasive Yes. And that is a very, very good example and a yes. great place to leave it. Yeah. So thank you. Shabba, um, if, yeah, by the way, if people are, because um, it's a, a, a C-S-A-B-A, isn't it? Yes. So in case people are going to go and check you out on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, the link will be in the show notes, but it's been an absolute pleasure. This has been so much fun. And um, thank you very much for joining me on the show. Likewise, it was my pleasure. And thanks again for inviting me. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you got some great ideas that you can take away and apply to your business to help you grow. If you did, please share it with somebody else that might also find this valuable because they will thank you for it. Also to let you know that I have a podcast gift page where I put a lot of resources that I love to share with my listeners. You can find the links to join the Facebook community there and you can get my book the conversational relationship marketing and the audiobook version all for free plus a number of other resources i'll be adding over time on that page so make sure you head there to thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift and you can help yourself to the things that make most sense to you and if you have enjoyed the show please make sure you're subscribed you'll get updated as the new episodes come out and finally last favor please consider giving the show your honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one. They mean the world for me. I love hearing from my listeners and it does help others find the show as well. So if you want to go and do that, I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, have an awesome day and we'll speak soon.